Hello, viewers. So we are doing a playlist on integrating Dynamics 365 FNO with Logic Apps. And in this video, we will start using DMF Package API. So in order to uh, start the configuration of Logic App, it is recommended that you should have an understanding of data management framework, how to create, export, and import project in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, and uh, a bit of a overview of the package structure. I'll cover that in this video, but won't be going into details because the focus is how to configure Logic App. So I'll start sharing my screen. So uh, what we have done here is that in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, we have configured a data project to import customer groups. So the data project name is IMP underscore customer groups, which has an entity customer group linked to it. Now this will consume a package, uh, which is a zip file. And under that package is basically a CSV file which will contain your records. So uh, to make it easy, what I have done is I have created a blob storage in my resource group. Under which there is a folder with the name of inbound. And in this folder, I have a zip file, which is my blog, which is my package, which I will be pushing into Dynamics operations environment. I have customer groups, uh, so I'll just delete these customer groups. So these might have come when I was testing my previous import. So now I have deleted these values, but they are, they exist in the zip file which is currently stored in, in one of the blob storage. So what might happen in a real time scenario is you have a logic app which is reading data from a particular source and then you probably can use uh, data factory pipelines to create a zip file or you can write your own Azure function to create a zip file out of it. So uh, for this example, I have uploaded a zip package file in one of the Azure blob storage. And what we will do is uh, I have actually cloned the old data uh, logic app which we created earlier so that we don't have to actually uh, define these variables again. So at the moment, this logic app has just the initialization of variable inside it. So we have my uh, resource, the FNO URL, tenant ID, client ID, and the secrets defined. So we will now start calling the REST APIs, which are part of the package API framework. Now, I highly recommend to read this uh, Microsoft Learn page, which actually details out uh, nicely what all APIs needs to be called and in what sequence. For us, in this particular scenario, we are going to focus on, on the import APIs. So there's a nice diagram towards the end where it talks about how we can actually export import. and one thing is like in in order for us to if we are using our own cloud storage we can actually directly call the import from package api uh, and uh, that way we can use our own our own secured blob storage path in the url so uh, let's do that so step 1 uh, for us is to create a secure url for the zip file so in order to do that what we can do is we can use the connector of azure block storage and we can use create as uri by path and here what we can do is we have to initial create a connection at the moment i have an active connection which is actually pointing to my blob storage now if you have to create a new connection it's pretty easy so you click on change connection click on add new and here you can give a name of of your connection and basically what you can use is access key now when you use an access key the way you can get these value is basically if you go to your blob storage let me quickly show it so if you go to blob storage and then if you go to access keys this is where you can get the storage account name and you can copy the key so you can copy the uh, store uh, the blob storage endpoint name 
and you can also copy the key by clicking on the show button then copy icon and then you can do this and then basically that's how you create a new connection so you have created a we have created a new connection to my blog storage and i can then define the file which i wanted to send as a part of my uh, data uh, import in dynamics now what this particular block of execution will do is it will create a, a secure or uh, SAS URL to access that zip file. Now let's move to the next step, which is to basically invoke the URL to import the file, which is basically import from package URL. So what we'll do is I'll just call it import from package. And what we have to do is if we look at this import from package is actually a post method. So it's mentioned here that the import APIs, import from package, import from package is a post method and we have to post this particular, call this particular endpoint. So what we do here is we go and say post, and in our URL, we have the audience, and then we paste the endpoint that we are telling Dynamics to, hey, import from package. Now, in this particular request, we have to send a body. Now, in the body, we need to have these parameters, which are the package URL, definition group ID, and a few more things. So what we can do is basically, uh, I have copied it, uh, created a sample. So what we can do here is in the body, I'll just paste it. At the moment, we don't have an execution ID. So in order to get package URL, basically you can you will get it from your previous step. You can select the package URL. Now let's try to post it and see what happens in Dynamics. So at the moment, uh, what we have is the data project which we created is having few execution runs in the past. But let's quickly see. OK, so at the moment there is no job ID which is in running status. So let's try to. Run it till now. So the reason I'm trying to do is because when we call the import from package, we want to read the response to extract the execution ID returned by finance and operation. So if we run this. What I'm expecting is with that post method we will create a new record here that a new execution uh, instance is created for that particular data project so okay i think i have not enabled it let me quickly go and enable this workflow and let's run it now so now that when it is running we can see okay uh, there is some issue OK, the issue is because I forgot to give the authentication. I can say authentication has failed. So let's quickly go back here and go back to our logic app workflow. And we have to define the authentication. Now when we define authentication, it's similar to what we did in OData. And this is where defining these variables as a uh, as well, these these values as variables comes handy because you don't have to copy paste them again and again. So now we have defined the security and let's run this trigger. So let us check dynamics. If I refresh this, you can see a new instance has started, which the status is didn't run, but it has queued. And now if I look here, the import from package call is successful and in the response I can see here that the response output is actually the execution ID which was generated in Dynamics. So if I have to zoom in and if you see the execution ID returned here, this should be same as the execution ID generated by Dynamics, which is here. If I refresh it, it will it, it processed, it ended, and now I should be able to see my records in customer groups table. So here you can see I can I have new records which were pushed through Logic App. Now this is uh, 
good because we are able to push a package, uh, but we are actually not really uh, quer querying the status from Logic App. So let's try to do that and see how we can actually retrieve this execution ID out of the payload and then do another call to check the status and see if it if it has really ended. So what I'll do is I'll also delete these records because I'll push that package again into the system. So let's delete these records here. Okay. So coming back to this logic app, what we can do is actually from, from the output, we can copy the response body and we go back to our designer. And now what we will do is we will add a new step which is to basically read the JSON. So in the data operations, we have parse JSON uh, as the uh, action which we can do. And in the content, what we can do is we will use the body from the response. And in this schema, what we can do is we will use the sample payload to generate schema. And this sample payload is basically what we have copied from the previous output. So when we do this, our logic app knows that the structure of the JSON, uh, which I have to read, is in this format. Now we will parse the JSON, and then what we will do is we will do another HTTP call to Dynamics to check the status. Now, if we go back to the learn site, uh, the next call which we are going to do is basically get execution status get execution summary status. So if we have to look, look at the get execution summary status here, um, we can see, we will be able to see the, uh, the, the syntax of the URL. So let me just find get execution summary status API, which is uh, basically, let's see, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, this. So get execution summary status has this uh, this format of the call and in the body we have to pass the execution ID. So what we will do is and and it is a post method. So I'll just copy this this line from here. And we go back to our logic app and we make let's just rename and say check status. Uh, so we do a post call and in the url we use our dynamics with get execution summary status and in the body we basically have to give the execution id so basically what we can do is we can actually uh, create this body and in the execution id we will say uh, give me the execution id which you have retrieved from parts json so part JSON is because it's the name of the action. So here I can say execution ID is from parts JSON value. So the value extracted from the previous step goes as an input to the body of this step. So now here I'll check status, but before checking status, I know that it might take a little bit of time. So what we can do is actually we can insert a, a timer so that we wait for let's say 30 seconds before the status is checked so we can insert a delay of 30 seconds before we check the status again so this way we give enough time for the dynamics data management framework to process the package which we have queued in the previous call so now we have what we have done just to summarize we have pushed the package in dynamics now we have extracted now we are here we have read the json response and then we are waiting for 30 seconds and then we are checking the uh, checking the status uh, and we are passing the value from the uh, which we have extracted from the um, initial payload so let's run it so we will save this and we will run it now what we could have done is like we could have saved the um, execution id in a new variable uh, in case we have to create multiple branches in our flow to check for each status and send email notifications 
but as the objective of this playlist is to um, just look at the core of what's needed to invoke Dynamics APIs and the best practices can be brought in place uh, when we do a real-time implementation of these logic apps. So let, let's look at this response. So here we have got uh, a response. This is our execution ID. Let's go back to Dynamics and look at the data project execution. So we go to our import project and we look at the job history. Here we should be having the execution ID, the same execution ID which we got in response here. And as we can see, the status is already ended. So if we look here, uh, there is some error, I think. Um, Authent ah, again, authentication failed. So yeah, we forgot to uh, put the authentication in the check status. So what we can do is actually add the authentication parameters here. And then we can basically run it again. So taking advantage of defining these values as variables is pretty handy as you can see. Now let's run it again. So let's go back to Dynamics. Let's refresh. As you can see, the package has been queued again, and this is the execution ID, which ends with C778. Let's go back to the logic app, and we can see that the output is one ending with C778. So this is the execution ID, which is which we are checking the status for. Now, as we can see in Dynamics, it's still executing, and we have a timer running in Logic App to wait for 30 seconds, um, just as a. And then we can see, yep, the status check is complete, and the output is that yes, our status is uh, executing. So I think it basically uh, was still executing at the end of 30 seconds in this case. But this tells us how we can actually um, query the status, and based on different status values, we can take some actions. So uh, uh, this is uh, a quick walkthrough of how we can use a package API to import data in Dynamics 365 finance and operations. I hope this is helpful to you, but stay tuned because next we will be doing is exporting data from finance and operation via package API. Thank you for listening.